X Culture is a wonderful project. Uh, we get a lot of thank you emails, literally hundreds of them at the end of each semester. Uh, sometimes I get emails literally a few months later or even a few years later where students say, uh, you probably don't even remember me, but I took your course a long time ago. X Culture was part of it. Now looking back, I actually believe that was a very useful experience. It helped me get a job. It made me more effective in my job. So there are enough indicators to make me feel good about what we do. There are enough things that make me feel proud of what we do. There are enough indicators that tell me that what we do matters. It helps students learn. It helps students grow professionally, personally. But occasionally, I would get a complaint from a student. You know, at the end of the lecture, sometimes my student comes to me and complains. I do all the work. My team members don't do anything. Uh, it's too much work. <clears throat> my team members don't care. And occasionally, I even get the same information from the professors. They say that that's what their students tell them. And uh, one of the obvious you know, um, uh, factors here that need to be considered is that maybe it is only the students who experience problems talk to us. Maybe students who are happy, maybe students for whom everything is going well, maybe they have no reason to talk to the professors. <clears throat> and thus, 100% of what we hear ends up being negative. But in reality, it represents only a small percentage. For example, what if I have 100 students and 95 of them are very happy, everything is going very well for them, and so they never talk to me about this. Whereas there are five students who have problems, maybe they do more work than their team members. And so they feel obliged or compelled to share that problem with me. And so I hear from five students at the end of each lecture. And those are the only five who tell me something and they all tell me negative things. And I may be under this wrong impression that everything is going wrong. Everything is not working. Because the only time when I hear from students about the project, I hear negative things. Uh, so I wanted to look at the data to see how true those complaints or how representative those, com those complaints are of the bigger picture. Um, I just had a meeting with one of our professors, a professor who has participated in Exculture for many years. Uh, and she said that this year, she was not teaching the course herself, but there were five adjunct professors at her school who were hired to teach the different sections of the international business course that participated in Exculture. And she said she was surprised to hear that professors say the students are not happy. The students, uh, you know, every time they hear from their students, the students complain that it's too much work, that they do all of the work and the team members don't care. And so what we decided to do with her is to look at the numbers, to look at the satisfaction numbers that students provide to us at the end of each week and then at the end of each project. And we just had uh, the early track of the 2019 2A track over and so we thought let's take a look at the data let's take a look if students are happy or unhappy overall let's take a look if students from this particular university which is a top school in the country where the professor is from if those professors if those students maybe they're more demanding maybe they come in you know from a prestigious university maybe they expect more of their team members and maybe indeed they are less satisfied than the average in X culture. And then also let's try to look at the data from more different angles just to see if there is a problem, to what extent, where exactly the problems are. And that's exactly what we did. So what we looked at was in the weekly surveys, uh, we asked students to share with us um, one peer evaluations. So basically tell us how much they think their team members do. Effort, intellectual contribution, friendliness, but in this particular case, we were particularly interested in effort. So do the students in general feel that their team members do a lot of work or not enough? And then also at the end of each week, we have data on um, satisfaction, you know, how happy you are with your team, motivation, how motivated are you to continue working with your team, um, self-confidence and ability of the team to finish the project on time, and clarity, is everything clear, is everything going well? And then at the end of the project, and let me share the screen here with you so you see what I'm talking about here. We do a post-project satisfaction survey. So we ask students to evaluate how happy or tell us how happy they are with the overall performance of their teams, the idea, the project, the report developed by the team, then also the effort, and that's very important in this case, the effort their team members put into the project. The task they had to complete, did they find this task to be useful, uh, developmental? And then also the instructor, 
as well as the Exculture admin, so my team. And then probably most importantly, we ask them at the end of the project, do they feel this project, Exculture, help them learn, gain valuable positive or negative experience that would be useful in the future career? So do they feel it was useful for the future career? And so we looked at all of that, uh, at all of those data, and I will share with them uh, the results. But again, before I proceed with the specific numbers, I would like to emphasize that um, one, it is probably applicable, what I will share with you, probably applicable to most team-based projects, meaning that um, if you go to Google Scholar <clears throat> and if you search for studies on students' um, perceptions or satisfaction with team projects, you will probably find, not probably, I've seen hundreds of them studies that will show that people usually are not entirely happy with team-based projects because, you know, it creates interdependence, it creates the need to do some coordination, sometimes on the team somebody's not performing. So there seems to be a general aversion to team-based projects in academia, but also in the workplace in general. And so anything negative that we might find here probably doesn't really apply to Exculture exclusively. So it probably applies to all kinds of team-based projects that professors may use in their courses. So if anything is not perfect, chances are it's not because it is Exculture or because it is an international project. I bet if you used team-based projects in your courses, and I have, for example, in my other courses, it seems like even when it's a domestic you know, uh, project where everybody's from the same class, from the same rank of the university, from the same sort of location, the students are still not happy with the team-based project. But anyway, let me share the screens and you know, show you what we looked at here and uh, what we found. So here are some of the things that we looked at. So this is the uh, survey that we looked at. Um, uh, and you know, these are all of the data from the 2019 2A track. And so we looked at all of those satisfaction data. So the ones that I just showed you. So the, there are data uh, satisfaction with the team, satisfaction with the uh, idea put forth by the team, quality of the report, effort of the team members, very important, task that they worked on, instructor, admin, and most importantly, career. So are you happy with this project? You know, do you find it useful for your career? And so, yeah, it should be career. And so I extracted those data, as well as I looked at the peer evaluations. And so I took one of the last weeks and we looked at peer evaluations here and again, did the same thing. And so here are some of the data. So for the peer evaluations, uh, I literally just extracted all of the data related to effort. So each of these people, each of these students was evaluating the, the, the effort of the peers, you know, that's team member one, team member two, team member three, team member four, and so on. And so for example, in this particular case, the student who was taught by Professor Germania Rice, he was very not happy with his students. So apparently he evaluated four of his team members and gave one to everybody. So not happy at all. And then there were some who were more happy and less happy and so we ran a pivot table and so looked at those data and here is what we found. So the overall peer evaluations, that's overall what students gave to their team members was 4.1. It's a five point scale where five is excellent, four is good, three is okay, two is bad and um, one is very bad. So overall, looking at this whole project, students actually are pretty happy with their teams. Overall, they're happier than good but I'm not quite where excellent is, right? And then also we see that there is some difference across the professors. So the particular five adjunct professors of this professor are highlighted yellow here. And so what we see, for example, students in the class by Carolina Garcia, there were 20 of them in that report, you know, section. On average, when they were evaluating the effort of their team members, they gave them 4.3. So they were happier than good with their team members' effort, although not quite perfect 5.0. Then there was another professor here, Danielle Gomez, also 4.3. Danielle Acosta, uh, so she was 4.1 and then 4.2. So what that tells me is that overall the students at this university were somewhat higher than average, but more importantly, they were happier with their students than just good. So they thought it was better than good. It was maybe not quite excellent, but it was better than good when it comes to evaluating the effort of their team members. Now, looking at this overall, not only this particular school that had five professors, but overall, yeah, we see that, for example, you know, there were four students from the class by Professor NVU, 
And so on average, they felt that their team members' effort was 3.8. So it's almost good, slightly below good, but way above okay and not close to excellent. Uh, there was, for example, another professor here, uh, Emmanuel. So his students were extremely happy with their team members. So they gave an average 4.5. Uh, Daniel Roddick is another professor, so his students usually get very high scores themselves, but it also seems like they're very happy with the students on their team. So they, for effort of their team members, they also give 4.3, 4.4. So they're very happy with their students. So, and then there was, for example, this another professor, well, that's only one student, so it's a very small section for some reason. So that one was not happy with his or her team. So, but overall, I don't see a problem here. In fact, it seems to me that overall, the students are pretty happy with our team members, right? And so um, I even did some um, calculations here. So if I go to peer evaluations data, and if I get this number here and put it in um, um, statum, so let me just clear the data here. And if we look at the peer evaluations distribution, so here is what they look like. So we will put um, histogram, um, and so this is what they look like. So pretty good. I mean, most students seem to be in this, uh, and I think that's at the instructor level, but pretty much most students seem to be between okay and uh, excellent. So we have a few who are below okay, and maybe, I don't know how many, like a few, very few students who give their team members something between one very bad and two bad. But overall, it's pretty good. In fact, quite a few students give their team members perfect fives. So is it perfect? Well, I wish everybody was happy at the level of five. But overall, that's actually pretty good. I even wanted to see the correlations or how this corresponds to, for example, evaluations of some of the most you know, beloved products. And so I went here to Amazon, looked for iPhones, for example, iPhone 10. And when you look at the evaluations of iPhone, as you can see, you know, the distribution of this arguably very, very good product is actually much lower than the satisfaction of our students with their team members. Let me find one that has more, like for example, iPhone XR. Again, you know, many people are happy, but there is a sizable portion of customers who are not happy with this product. Same thing here. So um, I also thought, well, maybe people don't like Apple, so let's take Samsung. Again, another very popular product. So uh, Samsung, you know, uh, Galaxy S10. So uh, 230 people evaluated this particular model, and yeah, most of them are happy but many of them are not happy. So when I look at our own evaluations, they're really not that bad. I mean, it's, it's normal. In fact, I would be very surprised if people were extremely happy with every team member they have. I mean, you've worked on teams, you always probably had some team members who didn't do a very good job. So given that it's a, such a small portion that is in this negative tail, I think that actually tells us that overall, even though most of the things that we hear from students are complaints, Overall, they're actually very happy with their team members. And it's probably the ones who happen to be in this left tail here are the ones who talk to us and complain. And, uh, you know, um, that's the only thing that we hear. Then what we did, we extracted these data related to satisfaction. So satisfaction with the team, with the effort of the team member, the task they had to complete, instructor uh, that taught the course, admin, so basically my team and career. So I put it uh, project here, but that's the how useful did you find it to be for your career. Same thing, you know, looking at the overall averages for the entire, entire group. Uh, so it seems to me that people were pretty happy with their team. So four, which is they thought the team was good. Effort, 3.8. So that's post-project at the time when they're fully done. There is no retaliation, no penalty for giving low evaluations. So again, 3.8, that's close to good. So on average, they thought the effort of their team members was kind of slightly below good, but way above okay. They seem to have loved the task, you know, the task, they gave 4.2 instructor, they're happy with instructor. Uh, I got the hit, so they were only 4.0 happy with me. So they thought we just did a good job, not an excellent, better than okay, good, but not excellent. And when asked, do you think this project would be useful for your career? So that's the actual wording here. Um, so did you find the project was helped, helped you learn, gain valuable positive or negative experience and could be useful for your career? On this dimension, they gave us more than good. So they basically told us, so this would be completely useless, somewhat useful, extremely useful. I learned a lot. So they're kind of right there. So they're very close to very useful, above poor, and way above somewhat useful. So overall, they seem to be pretty happy. And so again, we did the um, averages by professors. And so the five professors we had in question here, they, they are highlighted, but you can look at the bigger picture. 
And again, for these professors, like for example, Carolina Garcia, uh, team 4.3 satisfaction, effort put forth by the team members, 4.1 satisfaction. Task, they actually love the task, 4.5, that's pretty good. Instructor, 4.5. Even my team, admin, 4.4. Useful for the career, 4.1. So these are very good numbers. Again, looking at the rest of the picture, like for example, we had here, let's see who is last ha least happy. So for example, we have this professor, Asha uh, Mandirata. So I don't know, I think that's from the Netherlands, if I remember correctly. So her class was not very happy. Um, as you can see, I mean, these are still positive numbers. All of them are above okay. Uh, so, but um, you know, some of them, as you can see, pretty low. So I don't know what was the reason for this class being not very happy, but that's the only one that seems to be more negative. Then on the other hand, we have a bunch of classes where students are extremely happy. Like for example, Sam Akomea from Ghana, so another professor who participates over and over again. So they felt that it was extremely useful for their career, 4.9, almost a perfect five. And that's, by the way, a very large class. Like this semester, they have about 150 students. So that's not just one student, you know, given high numbers, that, that's a large class. And so they're very happy with just about everything, right? So, and then another, uh, Soma Aurora, Again, so we have students who are like almost perfect grades. So um, I don't have my students here because my students are in the late track, uh, but I know usually I get about average evaluations. And yeah, so they seem to be pretty good overall. Um, the big question is why do we get different results for different professors? Why students of some professors are happier than students of other professors? We looked at those data, we thought maybe students from the top universities have higher expectations, you know, do more work and are not happy with their team members, but that doesn't seem to be the case. We have some professors here who come from top, top, top schools and they still tend to be pretty happy. Like for example, Daniel Roddick here, he teaches that course uh, to the executive MBA students, that's Daniel too. And so uh, they are very demanding. I mean, these, these are people with tons of experience, managerial jobs, very, very demanding. And I actually see, and, and that's a very good school too. And um, Florida Atlantic University, one of the top schools on, on the East Coast here, at least in international business. And from what I see, they're pretty, pretty happy with the project. And in fact, they give 4.9 for the usefulness for the career. I mean, nearly perfect grade. So uh, he has another section, uh, undergraduate students, and these numbers are a little lower, but still, you know, in, in a good range. I mean, still close to four, so. So why is it different? We don't really know. We know it's not the rank of the university. We know it's not the size of the university or group. Uh, we know that professors who participate more times tend to have happier students. I guess over time, we sort of learn how to manage it. But other than that, I, we don't really know why. One thing anecdotally that I can say probably matters is how the professors present this project to their students. So we have some professors who sort of help the students play the role of a victim. So when a student comes and complains about something, the professor says something like, oh, poor you, I'm so sorry you had a bad team. I'm so sorry your team members are not doing anything. Let me talk to the Exculture admin. Maybe we can kick out some of those bad students from your team so you, you are with the students you deserve. And so when a professor says something like that, the student obviously feels that, oh, I really have a bad team. It's unlucky, it's a bad project. You know, uh, I'm such a good student and I got such a bad team, so they're not happy. Other professors respond in a very different way. They say, well, I'm kind of sorry to hear that you have a problem in your team, but at the same time, I'm sort of happy because you will participate in many team-based projects as part of your education, as part of your job, and you will always experience problems like that. There will be always someone who will not participate actively in the project. There will be always someone who will miss a deadline, who will miss a meeting, who will not work hard. And so Exculture is all about giving you a preview of what's in store. So it's not a walk in the park, it's not a trip to Disneyland. It's a realistic preview of what it is like to work in teams when people are all around the world. And so yes, it's tough, yes, some things go wrong, but that's the whole point, we want you to experience this. We want you to experience this now, so when you do it as part of your job, you know what to expect and you know how to handle it. So yes, I'm sorry that some of your team members are not participating in it, but that's exactly why we want you to participate in this project. Go try to do something about it. Try to talk to them, try to deal with it, and don't worry if it doesn't work out. You'll still get a good grade in my course. I know that you, you know, you're doing your, your job, so you'll, you'll get a good grade. 
but I want you to have that experience. So it's all about this real life experience, not some simulation on the computer where the computer responds to you every time. It's real people, uh, real challenges, real time zone differences, real cultural differences. It's tough, but it's supposed to be tough. So enjoy this opportunity to view what the future has in store for you because it will never be better. You will never have a team where everybody loves everybody, where everybody works really, really hard. So sorry, but that's the whole point. And I think when professors present it that way, students have a whole different appreciation for this opportunity. Students see it as a learning opportunity. Students perceive themselves as sort of trainees rather than customers who need to be satisfied. And I think that's you know, what makes a big difference. Now, there is one more important thing that I would like to discuss with you, and that sort of amazes me. And you know, one thing that we also do, and I will write here, one thing that we also do uh, when we do the peer evaluations is we not only ask the students to evaluate the performance of their team members on a one to five scale, but we also have a question that asks the students to tell us what percentage of the work was done by each team member. So the way it looks like is this. So there would be names of the students listed here, name one, name two, name three, you know, student A, B, C, D, E, so for example, A. So let's say five students. And so you would see the names of all those students, and then you have to tell us what percentage of the work was completed by each of the students in that given week, and then at the end of the project, and in a way, that it, the total must be 100%. So it's scaled so that the students cannot go to the next question until they distribute the 100% among the all team members. And so one of these team members would be me. For example, let's say I am this team member. And so one of the numbers will be what I give to myself, and then the rest what I give to this team. So for example, let's say if I believe that everybody is working equally hard, I would give everybody 20%, I would say everybody did 20%, right? And so that gives me a total of 100. In reality, as you can imagine, students give themselves somewhat higher numbers, right? They say, I personally perform better. So in many cases, they would give themselves maybe 30 or maybe even 40 or maybe even something higher. And so what I would like to ask you is, what do you think I get when I add all of those self-evaluations? So every team member, evaluated themselves and evaluated other team members. And so when I add everything that they distribute, I get 100%. If I add everything that students get, received from others, I get somewhat below 100, but you know, close to that. But you know, when this student was evaluating himself, he gave himself X. This one gave, this one gave, this one gave, this one gave. So when I add all of those self-evaluations, what do you think I get as a total? You can probably guess that it will be more than 100%, but how much higher? The truth is that if I add all of these self-evaluations, people on average give themselves 30 to 60 to 70%. And often when I get a total, I get, in fact, you know, sometimes people say, oh, you will get like 120% or 130. I wish. Most of the times I get percentages closer to 200. Sometimes in fact, in some semesters, it's like 230. So what that tells me is that in my eyes, I overestimate my own contribution by a factor of at least two, meaning that when I'm asked to evaluate my own performance relative to that of other team members, I always think that I've done more than others. And on average, when I do it for the whole cohort, it would be more than two times. So the reason for that is that it seems like our brain doesn't quite process, is incapable to process things that we do not see. Um, it's kind of similar to when you're trying to estimate how much time it will take you to complete a task, like when you're writing a paper or when you're trying to do something. You know, we always underestimate how much time it takes to complete a task. I think I will be able to get it done in an hour and it takes me half a day. It happens all the time because you know, things go wrong. And so it seems to me like when I'm trying to assess the work, uh, the time others invested in the project, I sort of go by how much I think a task like that should take. And I don't really perceive that sometimes it takes more because something didn't go right, something didn't click, something didn't, you know, wasn't in place. So I know how much it takes me with all those little difficulties and barriers and you know, distractions, but I don't really think about it the same way when I evaluate the work of my team members. 
And so in most cases, it seems like I'm just, you know, because of that bias of that inability to perceive the work done by others that I didn't see, it leads me to overestimate my own contribution to the team project and greatly underestimate the contribution of others. And so probably that's why we hear all those complaints that I'm doing all of the work when they do, do nothing. But the reason for that is this, you know, self-serving bias. I mean, it's, it, just, it just happens. In fact, if anything, I'm quite amazed that we have so few students who sort of stop working and who say that it was very bad. I mean, I'm amazed that given this propensity to greatly overestimate our own contribution and greatly underestimate the contribution of other team members, we still see that most of the students are very happy. We still see that most of the students give their team members high peer evaluations. We still see that when it comes to peer evaluations, almost all are above three or K. Most are in the good to excellent range. Same thing with the satisfaction, same thing with the learning outcomes and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, I don't know, that, that's my take on it. So um, every time when the student comes and complains to me, I obviously get upset. Uh, I think that maybe we're doing something wrong. But then I look at the larger numbers and it seems like overall the students are very happy. Overall, the students think that their team members are doing a pretty good job. Overall, they think that it was useful for their career. One thing I would like to do is to maybe survey sometimes a sample of the students like three months or maybe five, six months, or maybe even a few years after the project. So obviously when you are in the middle of the project, when it's you know, a lot of stress, a lot of you know, deadlines and work, I guess you know, it's easier to be a little dissatisfied. But I think, you know, over time, the satisfaction data will be even better because most of the time when we get thank you letters from the students, it's not right after they are completed with the project, but in many cases, you know, a little later when they say, oh, you know, looking back, it was very hard during the project. It was very demanding. I was so mad at this team member who didn't do anything. But looking back, I actually think that was a very useful experience. And so that happens all the time, I get those letters. So that's, that's what I would like to ask you to, to keep in mind. So next time a student comes to you and complains, uh, you know, look at the numbers. You have all those data. I send them to you every week. Uh, look at the totals. Look at the averages. Calculate your own averages compared to the other professors. And what likely will happen is you will see that it's not so bad. In fact, most of your students are happy. Most of all of the students are happy. Uh, they're happy with the task. They're happy with the team members. And it just happens to be that those who are happy don't have the reason to talk to you. So the only ones who come and talk to us are the ones who are not happy. And that's why sometimes you'll get that perception that maybe everybody is not happy. So that's all I wanted to say. If you have anything else to add to that, I would really appreciate if you respond to me and maybe send your comments. Uh, but that's, that's what the data seems to be telling us so far.